Hi, I'm Marita MacDonald from Dentist TV and I'm at the British Dental Association's annual conference and exhibition 2011 in Manchester and I look forward to interviewing some of the speakers, exhibitors and key opinion leaders at the show. I'm here with Dr. Murray Hawkins from Vibroject UK. Um, Murray, please can you tell us a little bit about Vibroject and what it's all about? Yeah, Vibroject is a little system, it's a little clip you put on your an anaesthetic syringe, it works on any dental anaesthetic syringe. Okay. When you turn it on, you get a vibration transmitted through the needle. So there are two messages being transmitted to the patient's brain. They're getting the vibration message and also the pain of the needle going in and the fluid going into the gum. The vibration message travels faster than the pain message. So basically the brain only feels vibration. Right, okay. Um, because it's quite prominent for dental patients to have a real phobia for needles. How, how widespread is it? 25% um, of patients say that they have a fear of needles okay. and 10% have such a big phobia, a full-blown phobia, that they won't go to the dentist until they're absolutely in agony. Okay. And so this takes away from, from that by taking the pain out because there's the fear that's based on, on the pain Exactly. I mean, we even treat needle phobics this way. Okay. Um, on our website, there's actually a lad who is a full blown needle phobic who has his treatment with Fibroject okay. and uh, we can, he can get around it. Okay, so in a nutshell, can you explain to dental professionals who yeah. are watching this exactly how um, that can work in their practice and how they can use it on patients who are particularly scared of needles? Right. Well, I think there are two techniques one for children and one for adults. With children, I just call it a buzzy thing, and I say I'm going to use a buzzy thing to numb your tooth up. I turn it on, I let them hold it, and then I take it back, and I put it in their mouth exactly where I'm going to inject. So they've got used to what it feels like. I then say to them that we're going to put a little bit of anaesthetic on their gum to send their gum to sleep, and I give the injection syringe to my nurse, who then puts a needle on. It comes round the back, behind the chair, and I lift their lip up, and it goes straight in and it felt, feels to them just like it felt before it had a needle Certainly. on and they don't even notice if it had an injection. Okay. In fact, quite often I've got the mother watching um, because I normally have the parents sitting opposite and often mums say, was that instead of an injection? And they've got to watch me give an injection. Okay. So that's the technique I use with kids. Yes. With adults, I often just call it a TENS machine. It isn't technically a TENS machine, but people know the concept and they're happy with that. That's a quick explanation. If they want to know a bit more, I explain exactly how it works, you know, with the vibration message going faster than the pain message. Okay. And how much do these pain-free local anaesthetic devices cost? Well, that's the great thing about them. They're really cheap. The basic model with disposable batteries is only £299. That's full up, no VAT on top. Uh, the rechargeable one, which is what I use in my own practice because I think it's more convenient, is £341. Murray, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. I'm speaking with Dr John Milne, who is the chair of the BDA General Dental Practice Committee. Um, John, based on the new reforms in dentistry that are taking place, what are the delegates saying? What have you picked up in discussions today? Well, the delegates are confirming what we've known for quite a long time, which is that the profession is keen for, for there to be reforms. The 2006 contract, it hasn't worked for, uh, for patients, it hasn't worked well for dentists, and there's clearly an appetite for something new and something that's better. John, you mentioned the new dental contract. Um, what has this conference done to promote the discussion and debate around this for the profession? Well, I think the, uh, the profession's heard today that the pilots that are beginning on the new contract, which are starting any time now really, um, are the beginning of a process of redesign. And we've heard from a dentist in Salford who's been telling us how he's put these reforms into practice in his own, in his own work uh, and how that's brought about improvement in oral health in the patients that he's seen. And so I think it's been a, a demonstration to people that there's practical change needed, that people need to think quite carefully about uh, uh, how they work in their practices to bring prevention mm. to the core. Um, and those are the really important things that are necessary if we're going to bring about oral health improvement for the country. Certainly. 
Now, the Secretary of State's presence here at the conference really puts this in a bigger political context. What's your comment on that and how, how this is happening? Well, I'm really pleased that the Secretary of State's coming to the conference and I think it uh, emphasises the point that dentistry is not just about repairing teeth and that the professions involved in health improvement across the whole population. Now, the reforms uh, that are coming in across health care, I think, put, put the profession in an interesting place uh, where we can emphasise the need for oral health improvements that will affect people's quality of life, not just when they're at the dental practice. So, for example, um, older people in care homes and places like that, um, it's really important that their oral care is... Uh, um, is streamlined and, and actually links in with the other care that those people need to receive. So I think the presence of a Secretary of State um, is very helpful, and, and I'm sure that sure that and I'm sure uh, that dentists will enjoy listening to him. Mm. Thank you very much, John. I'm speaking with Professor Damien Wormsley, who is scientific advisor to the British Dental Association. Damien, tell us a little bit about this year's conference programme and what you think is really interesting about it. Well, the BDA conference is always really exciting, and I, I like it as an academic because there's such a wide range of subjects that you can go and see. For instance, there's toothwear, there's restorative dentistry, there's aesthetics, and it also caters for the dental team. So it's a great package. In fact, there's too much to do almost I would say is the argument with it. Um, and you're also chairing um, one of the scientific sessions, can you tell us a bit more about that? Well I'm chairing a session from my good colleague Professor Ian Chappell and Ian's doing a lot of exciting work on nutrition, on nutrition and how it affects the gums mm. and so he's going through various ways that uh, your diet may affect your periodontal disease and he's doing some exciting research at the moment so I really do think that's a must to listen to Ian and to, to put it on as, as well, Ian is one of the a really good speaker so I'm very very honoured to be chairing the session, be a bit of fun doing it yeah. and chairing him. Okay, and anything else on the programme that you would consider to be an absolute must-see for dental professionals who are attending the conference? That's a difficult one because there's so much to see, even in this exhibition hall, there's just yeah. so many things that you can dip, yeah. it's rather like a, a, a box of chocolates, I and mean, as a dentist saying that, it's probably not a good thing to say, but it is, it's, it's a treat, you, you just pick what you want, I mean I went through the programme one night and made sure I had a list and going through things, So, but I'm not even keeping to that because I've been sidetracked by so many other good things that are happening. And I presume quite a few of the students from the Birmingham uh, School of Dentistry are also here yes. with it being in the northwest, so making use of the Well, it, geographical... it's just good. I mean, some of our students are here, past students and colleagues. It's also a good meeting place to meet people, like meeting yourself. I haven't caught up <laughs> with you recently, and so it's really good to find out what's happening mm -hmm. and where things are in dentistry. Sure. Okay. Well, Damien, thank you so much for That's coming a pleasure. to talk to me. Thank you. I'm speaking with Paul Brooks, who is a regional consultant for Daneplan. Paul, I think it's certainly safe to say that it's a world first to have a green ninja at a dental show. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about where you found him? Certainly. Um, the whole concept of a Daneplan ninja, or a ninja in general, is that ninjas operate uh, efficiently and ruthlessly uh, in the background, quietly, hence why he's not talking. And, uh, we just thought it would be a great concept, something that has never been done before and would make people ask the question, what is this all about? Okay, so as a practice, how can you get your own ninja? <laughs> <laughs> the Denplan ninjas are out there, it's just getting hold of them, getting them into practice and understanding how they can work with you uh, in an efficient manner. Okay, fantastic. Okay. So basically, if you're a Denplan member, you actually, it comes with a standard green ninja. Basically, if you're a Denplan member, you will already be experiencing that ruthless efficiency. But okay. if you're not a Denplan member, now's the opportunity to uh, find out more of what we can actually do for you uh, as a dental practice. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Okay. That's it for this show here at the BDA Conference and Exhibition in Manchester. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Dentist TV.